Okay, to, for this lesson we're going to be talking about gas transport again. We previously discussed oxygen transport in the blood. Now we're going to focus primarily on the transport of CO2 in the blood. So, first we'll talk about how CO2 is transported and then that will lead into how the pulmonary system facilitates acid-base balance. Uh, the reason for that is one of the ways that CO2 is transported is intimately involved in controlling the pH of your blood. Alright, so CO2 is transported in the blood in three ways. Oxygen was, was in two ways, right? We transport oxygen in the blood uh, by being bound to hem hemoglobin or by being dissolved in the blood. We have both of those scenarios going on with CO2. We get about 10% of our CO2 that dissolves in the blood. Uh, CO2 more readily dissolves in the blood than oxygen does. And we also get some of the CO2 that binds to hemoglobin uh, and forming something called carbaminohemoglobin, which is a really fun word to say. The vast majority of our CO2, though, is transported in the form of bicarbonate. Now, here in this diagram, we have a cell. We'll say this is a muscle cell. And this muscle cell is forming CO2. So it's going to be forming it through the citric acid cycle. That CO2 has a couple of options on how to get transported and handled in the blood. Uh, all the CO2, the CO2 is going to dissolve out. Some of it will go out and just dissolve in the plasma. Right, uh, it, it floats around in the plaza, plasma. Conceptually, this would be a lot like just your carbonated soda. The CO2 is just floating in there. A second option for the CO2 is that it will go and bind onto hemoglobin uh, and be transported that way. So not too different from how oxygen is binding on. Same, same concept. Now the third most important way is that the CO2 will dissolve out and when it gets into the blood, it, it makes its way onto the red blood cell. And in the red blood cell, there's an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase that will help convert the CO2 into bicarbonate, or HCO3-. Uh, so let's focus in on some of these things. The, the buffer system, or bicarbonate, is by far the most important way of transporting CO2 in your blood and throughout your body. So it, we, in this bicarbonate buffer system, we have two reversible reactions. Notice that the arrows point both ways. That means uh, if you have a lot of CO2, it will drive the formation of acid and bicarbonate. If you have a lot of bicarbonate or acid, it will cause the formation of these things. They equalize out. Um, you could almost think of it as as these things kind of being on a scale. Yeah, that doesn't really work, does it? Um, if it if it was a scale, here's how this doesn't work. If it was a scale, if you add on more CO2, that would weigh this down and cause that to go up. Um, really, what happens? in the bicarbonate buffer system, it's not when one goes down, the other goes up. It's when one goes up, CO2, it causes HCO3 and acid to go up. So a, a, a balance or a scale really isn't the appropriate metaphor there. But here's how it happens. We have CO2 being formed, let's say, by the muscle. That CO2 is going to come out and combine with water. Now this can happen on its own, but most of the time it's going to happen with an enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase. And that carbonic anhydrase then forms something called carbonic acid, uh, so H2CO3. Can you see how our H's from the water have combined with the CO2 and the oxygen? So now we have H2CO3. Now this is, a, a, this is carbonic acid, and it's a decently strong acid, which means that it kicks off one of these hydrogens pretty quickly. Uh, and you don't need any, any enzyme or anything to make that happen. It just naturally happens. And so you lose one of the hydrogens, comes off, and then the remainder is bicarbonate, which is an H with the CO3, and it has a negative charge. So it would be HCO3 minus. Uh, 
Now here's what's cool about this. Let's say you have a lot of acid in the system. We put a lot of hydrogen ions or protons in there. That's going to cause the hydrogen to be more likely to bond with the bicarbonate and it will form carbonic acid which naturally goes to water in the other direction. Okay. Now I'll show you a couple other ways to look at this. Uh, hopefully you'll figure it out by the end. So with that, we're talking about CO2 transport. Remember CO2 can be transported as dissolved in the blood, bound to hemoglobin, or transported by bicarbonate. And bicarbonate is by far the most important. Not only is bicarbonate buffer system important for transporting CO2, but it's also very important for uh, balancing or managing the pH of your blood. And it will be acutely adjusted, um, can be adjusted quickly by altering your ventilation. By exhaling CO2, you can affect how much acid and bicarbonate are in the blood. So here comes one way to look at it. So let's say we got a muscle cell, and that muscle cell is going to form a lot of CO2. As the muscle forms CO2, it goes out into the blood and will eventually form the carbonic acid, which isn't very stable, so that will eventually go to this acid and bicarbonate. As the bicarbonate is transported toward the lung, it now goes back down to HCO, uh, goes down to CO2. Why would it go back down? Well, because we're getting rid of CO2. We exhale the CO2, which makes a CO2 deficit in the blood, and that means that the HCO3, or your, your bicarbonate, sorry, yeah, your HCO3, the bicarbonate, will dissolve to fill in that deficit of CO2. Um, acid, when you exercise, you'll also form acid. So what's going to happen with this acid is, if let's say you start using these type 2 fibers that make a lot of acid, the acid will go out into the blood and it will favor uh, the, the combination of acid with bicarbonate, which would then form CO2 uh, in both directions. It's a, it's a balance here. We'll have the CO2 from the muscle uh, trying to form bicarbonate and the hydrogens when they add in they'll they'll put in some emphasis to try and form co2 and water ultimately you're going to form a lot of bicarbonate and then that bicarbonate will dissolve back down to to co2 and water as you exhale the co2 okay let's look at this in a slightly different way this is how i like to illustrate um, how I like to illustrate equilibrium reactions. Uh, I, a couple minutes ago I tried to illustrate the bicarbonate buffer system with, with a teeter-totter or a balance and it doesn't work. This is how, this is more of an equilibrium reaction. So in this setup, let's suppose we have two cups, one that's filled with CO2 and one that's filled with bicarbonate and acid. What's going to happen if I fill up this cup with CO2 and water? If I fill up that cup, because they're connected through this tube that represents carbonic anhydrase, this one will also fill up slightly. So if I add uh, 100 units over here into the cup over here, 50 of those units will be added to the CO2 side and 50 of those units will be added uh, in the form of hydrogen and HCO3. It's a balance. Okay, so let's see if we can wa work our way through this. When you exercise, you're going to form CO2, right? The CO2 comes from the citric acid cycle predominantly. That CO2 is going to dissolve out of the muscle and get into the blood. So by exercising, we're filling up this side of the, the bicarbonate buffer system. We're adding in a lot of CO2 and water. Now that's going to naturally drive up the other side and so we'll have a higher level of acidity and bicarbonate as well. So the CO2 we, we produce during exercise actually can cause, through the bicarbonate buffer system, causes an increase in acidity or a decrease in pH. Now one of the things that you have in your body is an ability to get rid of the CO2. So 
But as we start to exercise, we produce a lot of CO2, but we also breathe a lot more. And as we breathe or exhale, we're, we're exhaling CO2, so we're just starting to deflate or, or lower this side of the pool. And so we'll have less CO2 on this side. And as this lowers, the, this side lowers, the acid and the HCO3 will naturally, through equilibrium, start to drain over to this side. And the, the acid and the HCO3 will reverse. The acid will combine back with water, so you'll have less acid, and then you'll get your, your CO2. So just by exhaling, by exhaling your CO2, we create a deficit on this side over here that makes bicarbonate and acid shift back towards CO2 and H2O. So hyperventilating or breathing very heavily, you can uh, decrease the acidity of your blood. Now here's something really cool. Um, this CO2 is actually the main thing that your body is monitoring when it's looking at if you're breathing appropriately or enough. Uh, it might shock you a little bit, but your, your body really isn't monitoring how much uh, oxygen you have going on in your blood. Uh, only in scenarios where you get pretty desaturated, where you have a partial pressure under about 60 millimeters of mercury of oxygen, that's when you start caring about oxygen. The rest of the time, your body cares about CO2. You have sensors throughout your body, in your brain, and in, in your circulatory system that are monitoring how much carbon dioxide is floating around in the blood and that's what's going to dictate your breathing so as you start to exercise and produce this co2 um, that co2 will signal for breathing which will help decrease your acidity and the ph associated with exercise now in the long term you can also uh, control your ph uh, by excreting bicarbonate through the kidneys this isn't terribly relevant to exercise but in the long run, your body also monitors and controls its pH through excretion in the kidneys. So if we added acid, let's say you have an enemy and you, you get, they inject acid into your blood. Now let's hope this never happens, but if acid's injected into your blood, that's gonna fill up this side of the cup. We'll have a lot more acid, which the acid, if you have a lot of it, is going to try and combine with, with HCO3, which eventually goes back into CO2 and water. So having a high level of acidity will bring up the CO2 levels, which will then signal to your brain to breathe more. And so you'll exhale that CO2 and, and try and get your pH back to a normal level. Individuals that have uh, metabolic acidosis, ventilation will go up. Individuals that have poor ventilation where they can't get rid of that CO2, they because they can't get rid of the CO2, the acid begins to accumulate on the other side and they'll have a higher pH in their blood. So we just did the acid. Um, that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, if you go into the PowerPoints, I encourage you to look through and, and do these practices. See if you can explain why VO2 max goes down on Everest, what blood doping was do, would do to your CaO2 and, and performance, and how hyperventilation would affect your oxygen saturation. Uh, check up on Learning Suite to see, uh, to look for any quizzes associated with this lesson.